Here we are with a brand new install of OBS. I'm gonna hit the settings button and get us set up for a basic 720p DJ stream. So the first thing I wanna do is set the dark theme because I like it. There we go. Now we're real DJs. Here's where you would put in your stream key from Twitch or YouTube. So I'd select Twitch. Uh, I'd go onto my Twitch dashboard and find the stream key. You don't want anybody seeing this because it'll allow them to broadcast to your channel. So it's a long string secret code that gets you access to your own streaming channel. Next we got the output. On simple, it's very simple. The main parameters that we want to focus on is the video bitrate. This is the quality of the video stream. 2500 is good to start if you're not sure of how fast your computer or internet is. When I stream 1080p 60, I go at 10,000. Yeah, that's a little crazy, 9,000. The encoder is basically where we decide what part of the computer is going to be making the stream. Software x264 is the default and that basically means the stream is made on your computer's CPU. If you have an i7 or a fast CPU, you have no problem encoding on your CPU. If you have a GPU like I do, you could select that here. It will show up depending on what GPU you have and what resources the computer has available to it. You set your audio bitrate. This is the quality of the audio. I think 192 is pretty tight for most streams. Uh, you can go up higher, but I would say do not go below 128. The audio is such a small percentage of the overall file size compared to the video, so I like to push the, I like to push the settings up. Next up, we got the audio panel, and right here, it's kind of nice, everything comes up disabled. Uh, OBS has this weird quirk where you can select the same audio device multiple times and basically explode your stream with distortion. So keep them all disabled, and we'll go through what we want to do. Desktop audio, we got two channels of these. It's basically, it allows us to pick any output coming from our computer and send it to the stream. I don't like to use desktop audio because it will pick up stuff like system sounds, uh, alerts, and that kind of thing. So we use the dedicated audio interface. Where is, where are you? Where are you, buddy? Oh, yeah, I didn't plug it in. That'll do it. So just a heads up, if you're using OBS, you gotta plug all your stuff in before you start. All right, I gotta quit and reopen. Look, get ready, get ready for this. This is the world of streaming. Are you excited? You feeling good? All right, let's go. Let's get this little puppy on. Audio, mic auxiliary audio device. Where's our USB audio codec? There it is, boom. And now anything that comes into this guy will come up right in full quality on the stream. Awesome. Next up is our video tab. This is some really simple but critical stuff that can make or break the stream. There are two different resolutions we can set. The base, which is our canvas, think of it like our document in Photoshop, the overall size and numbers of pixels we have to work out, and our output resolution. This is what size the stream is when it goes out to our viewers. A little known trick, you can save CPU by setting your scaled and canvas resolutions to the same. Uh, our downscale filter is the quality when OBS resizes stuff. I leave this on bicubic and we're gonna do 30 frames a second. Nice, reliable 30 FPS. There is some push I've seen from streamers to go higher 48 or 60 frames a second, but just know that most webcams only stream video back at 30 frames a second. And if you do 60, you're effectively doubling the workload on your computer. We're gonna go into the hotkeys. We're not gonna do this today, no need. And our advanced settings where I've literally never touched anything in here. All right, now we're to the fun part. We're gonna add our cameras. I'm gonna click down here at the plus sign in this sources window and select video capture device. I'm gonna name it camera one. Okay, Burp. Now I can select it from all the video things that my computer has connected to it. So we're gonna check our Logitech C930E. That's my DJ cam. And there it is. If I close this window by hitting okay, I can see this is not the full size of the layout. Now, oftentimes when you very first plug in the camera, it gets this right, but if it doesn't, it's really easy to fix. And in this resolution FPS type, I'm gonna change to custom, and that will unlock all these other options that we have. I'm gonna set the resolution to 720p, that's 1280 by 720. There we go. I hit okay, and there's our camera looking great. I'm gonna add a secondary camera I'm gonna put in the corner for my beautiful face while I'm DJing. Uh, my Serato face, hopefully not. Again, just right-clicking on sources or hitting the plus. I'm calling this camera two. Hit okay. 
I will select our secondary camera, a Logitech C920. And there it's me looking great. Uh, I'm going to hit custom. I'm gonna set the resolution to the same thing. No, no, my friend. It got excited. Now I can see in the sources window, the little eyeball, poke out the eye to look useful. And whatever is on top is on top. We can change the order of the cameras with these up down arrows. Bump, bump, bump. And if we wanna get back to our parameters, just click the wheelie gear. It's a gear, I guess. So let's shrink this camera down, put it in the corner and get ready to start playing music. I could just grab the corner here and shrink in size. I can click and drag around and put it wherever's good. Maybe this is a nice spot. I can see from this video feed that I need to plug my mixer in. So there we go, look at this. Now we have a nice little camera in camera, picture in picture. Now I noticed that both of these cameras I think could look a little bit better. The lighting's not ideal in this room because I have all the lights pointed at my face and I got the green screen back there. So let's edit the videos using the filters built into OBS. First I'm gonna take a look at our camera one, which is our DJ camera. Right click and at the very bottom, there's this filters section. Let's see what filters has to offer. We're gonna go to effects, I'll hit the plusy boy. I'm gonna go to color correction. And now we have access to a bunch of controls. The two that I almost always tweak are the contrast. I push it up and see, so got a nice high contrast look. And if pushing up the contrast makes it a little dark, we can adjust with the brightness control. We can turn the eye on and off to see how good. I like that high contrast look. Maybe it's not for you. Maybe you like the gray old timey DJ sets. That's very easy to do. These filters are super convenient in OBS. Look at how convenient they are. Look at I'm having fun. This looks tight. This week in chiptune, ready to go. Now I can see the color correction is just totally wrong on camera two. I'm gonna just blow this up so we can get a better look at it. I'm gonna right click go to the properties on this camera, and I'm gonna see what Logitech has given us to adjust the way this camera's showing up. By clicking this configure video button, boop, we get access to the hideous Logitech Pro webcam drivers. Sweet, I just can't wait to work in this window. This is the camera's built-in control outside of OBS, and we're able to change stuff like uh, the white balance that it clearly got wrong. I'm just gonna go ahead and say, oh, very red. And look over here. I don't know why you were so wrong, webcam, but you were. Also, check it out. Brightness contrast controls. So I'm gonna just adjust this right here. We're not even gonna need to use a filter for this. Boom. And would you look at that, real nice. So I'm just gonna bring them back down to a good size. Now I noticed to the, to the right of Cutman over here, um, there's a little bit of kind of wasted space that I just don't want in the frame. We can cut it out by holding down the Alt key and clicking on one of the little nubs. There we go. And look at how cool that is. So boom, there's our two cameras. You can also click on a source and use the arrow keys to be hyper meticulous. If you're like me and you got a problem, you gotta make everything perfect. Let's say we really like where this camera two position is and we don't wanna move it by accident and click the little lock icon, boop. And now you can't even click on that boy. Only this boy. If you uh, totally ruin your layout, you can right click on it, go to transform and say reset transformation goes right back to where we started. I'll show you a couple more sources if you want to get anything fancy. You can put some text on here. All right, text. There, you could pick a terrible font. This is a bad font, but a good DJ. And there you go. Wow, we are really making quality content, huh? So since we're doing such a good job, why don't I add an animated GIF by going to the image source, calling it Giffy boy. Uh, I apologize if anybody is like sick from my cute names for everything. It's really, it's not a conscious thought. It's just the way I deal. We'll go pull our good old boy DJ Koopa, throw him in here, and I'm gonna just blow him up. And all I did was just grab the corner, we'll scoot him, get him in a nice place. And now look at this. It's a bona fide, totally great DJ Cutman quality stream. We've set up everything we need to. We've got some text so people know what's going on. We got our two DJ cameras. We even have a GIF. But hey, let's say that we're gonna have some time in the stream where we're gonna not wanna be on camera at all. Maybe we're gonna have to put on a seven minute dead mouse song and run and use the bathroom. That's why I suggest creating a slate, a second scene with no camera, but maybe just something going on to keep your audience still on board when you gotta say, hey, I need to get off camera right now for whatever reason. To do that, we go to the scenes window and hit the little plus. Well, I need the new scene, slate, totally blank just like it was when we started. But I'm gonna add a background 
And I'm gonna go back into my gifts folder because gifts are supported, thank goodness, and get this nice, uh, this nice, um, nice warpy boy that I like. And we're gonna just pull this out. This is just an animated GIF playing in OBS, real simple stuff. I'm gonna add some text. If you don't like this type of text, there's another plugin called Pango, which you can use to have kind of more effects and control over your text. OBS has a ton of plugins you can get to expand its functionality, and Pango text is just one of them. I'm gonna pick a font that's not as bad. For this one, looks more like a meme, or maybe just like a better meme, I don't know. Pango has a drop shadow and an outline. Let's say I didn't like this text, click on the text and hit the gear at any point during the stream, even if I'm live, and say, just, just a second, this is important, and boom, changed right there. Say it's finally ready to start the show, I can get on the mic and say, hey guys, it's time to go. Click over to the other scene, and we're ready to roll with all of our cameras live. See, they're real cameras. I'm not messing with you, they're real. Woof, that didn't take too long, did it? I hope you enjoyed this brief tutorial on getting started up and set up with OBS. I tried to cover just about all the essentials in getting you going on OBS, but if you have any questions, you can let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. You can also hit me up on Twitter or Instagram at Video Game DJ. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you have a lot of fun streaming and hit me up when you do. I'd love to come and check it out.